I will always recommend a foundation in Linux to anyone who wants to get into a cloud engineering discipline. But I realize that understanding why Linux matters or what exactly it means to have a Linux skill set uh, is difficult for beginners when you don't have the, the sort of experience in a production role or actually just working uh, in cloud and whatnot. So I'm going to try to show a couple of examples of what I mean with like, oh, you should be comfortable with Linux. Or when most people say that, um, they're really just talking about like, bash, uh, but I'll, I'll speak more of this in, in the video, right? Um, so with all that being said, hi, I'm GPS and I do cloud things at Microsoft here on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I don't have to sell, uh, you know, $10 eBooks on Twitter. Uh, and welcome to a new video. All right, so I'm in Microsoft Learn, which I love using for workshops and demos and just overall encouraging new people to get hands on with Azure because it actually provisions a, an environment in Azure for you and you have a full on cloud shell here uh, and you don't have to pay for anything. You are learning on Microsoft's dime. The one that we're using specifically today is secure and isolate access to Azure resources by using network security groups and service endpoints. And I actually highly recommend you go through this. It takes about an hour, but I would recommend you go through it, do the exercises, do the first one and the second one in order because you have to, they build on each other, and then go through it another round uh, and take some notes. And if you want to blog about it, blog about it. If you want to sort of build further on this exercise, go and implement it in your own environment, maybe create some infrastructure as code files for it. You know, there's a bunch of things that you can add and improve into it. Maybe go ahead and deploy an app and some actual data to the data, uh, an actual database to the data server and whatnot. But this is a very common development infrastructure in cloud. Uh, so the sooner you get hands on and sort of building something like that, the better. And you can do it all within this uh, exercise here. Uh, so I highly recommend you check it out. And also you get uh, 10 sandboxes per day and about an hour. I think it's an hour for each sandbox. So that's 10 hours of learning. I don't think anyone would do that every single day, but you can if you wanted to. Uh, so do go check it out. I'll have it linked in the description. And the only reason I'm using this one is because I've actually gone through it and I don't really like to speak to things that I haven't actually used um, so that I can say I highly recommend it and give it a 10 over 10. Okay, cool. Um, so like I mentioned, the exercise itself doesn't really matter. I kind of want to just showcase a little bit of like commands and, and sort of how the, what does it actually mean to, oh, become comfortable with Linux before getting to cloud require it. Right? So even without doing anything, let's take a look at what we've got going on here at the left. We're, we're in a shell, we're in a cloud shell specific to Azure. A, a, uh, when we think of like scripting, we think of bash, we think of Linux, we think of automation. All these things are, are done via uh, CLIs. CLIs are text-based programs that allow us to use commands to work with a computer, work with a server. Every single service out there is gonna have a CLI uh, in terms of cloud. Uh, maybe not every single, but the majority. So there's either CLIs or SDKs. SDKs are using programming languages to interact with a cloud service, cloud platform. CLIs are using scripting languages and commands to interact with flat, uh, cloud platforms and services and so whatnot. Um, so we're already looking here. We're looking, we're seeing black screen and, um, you know, in this case, green. I think it's white text too, right? Uh, clear, yeah, white text there, cool. So if you have never worked with something like this, then you already know that you gotta go brush up on and like dive into Linux and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna just copy a couple of, of commands that are in this this tutorial and uh, I'll kind of go explain as, as I go, uh, like what are things that you should be familiar with, right? So this first one here is already something that you should be familiar with. So when it comes to scripting and, and, and um, sort of typing out commands. If you ever have like a really long value, like for example, we have here on the right side, uh, we don't ever want to have to type this out manually, right? Like never, no one, because first of all, no one's ever going to remember that. But this is where variables come into. So here, what we're saying is, okay, shell, or I want you to grab this value here that I'm never going to remember and save it into a variable called RG, this one here. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the next time I want to use RG so I can use echo to print out the value of a variable, uh, RG, it's going to actually return that full on thing uh, value here, right? So I don't have to remember this anymore. And this is something you become familiar with when you develop that Linux skill set, right? That automation skill set, that bash skill set that I'm sort of using them um, interchangeably though, d depending on the context, 
they can't be, but in this context, I feel like it fits, right? So that's already a uh, skill set that you need to know there. Now, oh, here's actually one being used, right? Uh, and if I do control shift V, there we go. We can see that, uh, let me zoom in actually a little bit more here. And so we can talk a little bit about a couple of things going on here. Um, so right away, that value right here is being used. A dollar sign means uh, this actually, we're calling a variable here. Remember, we saved that learn dash 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 number dash like, see, I don't even remember now uh, into this variable, but I do remember RG. So it makes it a lot easier for me to continue working with commands when, you know, that value, I don't have to remember it. And we're going to be utilizing it in this command. So uh, what else is going on here? Well, uh, you can see that all the commands that I'm using with Azure, specific to the Azure CLI, are going to start with AZ. And these prefixes are established by the CLIs themselves, whoever develops the CLIs, the teams and whatnot. So for example, I know like the Azure Static Web Apps uses SWA. So all the commands that you're going to run are going to start with SWA. Uh, like the Azure Functions CLI uses Func. The uh, Azure Developer CLI uses AZD and whatnot. So that's why this always starts with AZ. And the more you use more CLIs and more CLIs, the more you'll sort of start to remember like, oh, I want to do this in Azure. I have to start with this. I know that. Uh, the more I use, you know, any other one, you're like, okay, they'll have to start with different prefixes and whatnot. Following that, we have another command network, vnet create. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can actually know the list of all these things here too. But you can see a difference between, like, for example, the use of this network command, and then we see here a dash dash. Well, what is that, right? Well, these are what we call parameters or flags. And parameters and flags are used in combination with commands to manipulate what you are sending or what is getting returned to whatever it is that you're interacting with. So in this case, the AZ network vnet create, I'm creating a virtual network in Azure. And I'm assigning a bunch of parameters here. So for example, I'm saying I want it to be created in this resource group. I want it to have this name, ERP servers. I want it to have this address prefix. And then I want to have the subnet because by default, every virtual network has to have a subnet. If you don't provide the name and prefixes, one a default one will be created for you. Uh, so I want the subnet name to be called applications and the prefixes to be this address here, right? Or this range here and whatnot, right? Uh, but again, you will know and learn more parameters that you will want to send like the right combinations to the right commands as you use these more and more. So if you are following a tutorial, that's like a graphical one. So if, for example, if you are creating a Vena in the portal, I would recommend instead, like, okay, go through that, but go and find the equivalent to that in ACLI. Uh, so for example, this would probably take me, I don't know, three, four minutes. Uh, to create in the portal, whereas, you know, typing out this command is maybe a couple of seconds, right? Uh, so yeah, I think I already did this, so I'm not going to run it again. Uh, actually, can I just do clear? Yeah, perfect, clear. Um, cool. So that uh, those parameters and those flags will manipulate what goes to the CLI, and I, I, in this case, what goes to Azure, but also what can be returned from Azure, right? So for example, in, in uh, a use case for like manipulating what is returned to you from Azure is something like querying like JSON data. Uh, so there's this an example here. Here, So for example, uh, let's say I want to look at all the virtual machines that I have in my, uh, this current Azure development environment. So we can use AZVM list, right? But uh, CLIs tend to use JSON for this type of information, but JSON is great for computers to communicate with other computers but it's not really the best for humans to look at, right? So for example, let's say uh, this, this command here is trying to get me to figure out if the VMs that I actually have in my subscription are running, the uh, provisioning state of them, or the power state actually. Oh, power state and provisioning state. But if I look at this, I'd have to scroll, I'd have to look, know what I'm looking for and whatnot. Uh, and yes, as you do these more and more, you'll kind of know what you want to look for, but you never want to be in a situation where you want to scroll. So manipulating output is another skill set that you get with, you know, scripting and bash and whatnot, because there are things like the AWA, the AWK command, there are things like the grip command and whatnot that are all about manipulating. There's things like pipeline, pipelines and piping and redirection and all these kinds of things that are all about manipulating what is being returned to you. So in this case, uh, it is using this command, uh, the AZVM list, which I just showed you, that lists all the information about our virtual machines. 
uh, we're telling it specifically to show details. So this will show additional details that by default are hidden. And the key here is really this parameter that says query, because this allows us to use James path to query the JSON that is returned to us. James path is something that the majority of cloud CLIs uh, enable you to use for like a query. Uh, and it's very, very helpful. It's actually the language that you're supposed to be using, I guess the tool, not necessarily language to go and query JSON information. Right? So if I send this command here, you'll see I get a nice and lovely and easy to read table with three columns, name, provisioned, and power. This, um, these columns are provided by here. Like, so I have a name column, find the property name, assign it here, provisioned, find the property uh, provisioning state and assign it to this column and then power state uh, and find that value and then put it in power. Right? And then output table is what puts it in this table, but you could easily do like, depending on what you need. Like if you removed output table, you would have just JSON returned, but it's simplified, right? Because it's filtered. And then you could also have, like, if you wanted to assign this to a variable, you could do T this TSV and that removes the formatting. Uh, and then you see, you just have these individuals and this would be easier for you to assign to a variable if you needed to, or uh, if you needed to get this output and then sort of redirect it to somewhere else, like this might be uh, more straightforward for you as well. But also understanding how to manipulate, when to manipulate, oh, where do I save it to a table? What, do I name these columns? Like, how do I actually find this information and whatnot? How do I query this information? Is also something that you develop with a Linux skill set. Now, there are more things that I could probably do like a part two because this one is getting a little long, but uh, these are kind of like some basics. So really the key is just very, very, coming very, very comfortable with a CLI, the way that uh, any kind of service that you want to interact with uh, in Azure, like you'll know how to do it. You may not have things memorized, but you kind of have a feel for how a CLI works. So you kind of know how to get to it. You just need to know the specifics. Like actually let's switch back to the screen because I want to show you one last thing. Uh, another important thing, whoops, another important thing here is to understand how you can find help, uh, which is a very, very big thing like Bass and, and we'll have like the man pages, uh, which is short for manual pages. Uh, so if you do AZ help, uh, you'll see that it'll tell us, okay, um, sort of there's like a bunch of commands. It's like essentially documentation built into it, right? And if you say, all right, you know, you want to work with AZVM, which is the virtual machine command, you can do dash dash help here, and it'll give you a list of commands and parameters that are specific to the AZVM. And say, I know that I want to work with AZVM, I don't know, um, let's say create, create. Uh, so if I do AZVM create, a, and then, then I don't really know what else I can do here, what options I can provide. Well, I can do dash dash help, append that to that very end. And all this help here that is being returned to me is specific to that command itself, right? So again, just knowing how to work with one, becoming comfortable with one and knowing how to find help and how to find the options that you can uh, and can use will, one comes with experience, but also just by trying these things. And Linux is all about that. Um, so anyway, I hope this provide a little bit more of clarification of what it means to, Hey, I need a Linux skill set for, uh, to get into cloud and whatnot. Um, it's not hard and I find it extremely fun becoming powerful and efficient with a CLI will unlock many opportunities. And overall, it's just, I feel like it's, to me, it's fun. I feel like CLIs are like art in some way. Um, anyway, that's it for this video. I'll, I'll see you the next one.